And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. What would make you try to take your own life, not once, twice, but three times? Try fighting a war and then coming home to normalcy. The problem is called post-traumatic stress dis disorder. Thankfully, organizations like Camp Hope in Houston have resources for those brave men and women who are struggling. A veteran shared his private battles with us today. First, Samuel, let's start with you. How did you get PTSD? And at its worst, how bad was it for you? Uh, well, I joined the United States Marine Corps when I was uh, 17 years old. Um, I was able to go to boot camp when I uh, graduated school on, at 18. Uh, my first deployment was in 2007. Uh, I'm an infantry Marine, um, an L311. So my first uh, taste of, of war or combat per se was at a very early age. Um, I, the things I've seen and the things I endured, uh, like here we like to call them the, in, uh, the unseen wounds of war. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, my first deployment was in the Haditha Triad well, with the Marine Corps. My second deployment was in Karma Fallujah with the Marine Corps. So in the uh, span of, of three years, uh, 14 months of that was overseas um, combat fighting. Um, when I transitioned out of the Marine Corps, I, I really didn't have knowledge of what PTSD was. I was still young. I still didn't even know what life was about. Mm -hmm. um, but now that I am able to recognize and look at the, the past parts of my life, um, I would say the worst that PTSD has affected me was uh, I have three suicide attempts on my life. Um, I've, I'm an addict and an alcoholic because I didn't know the ways to cope for the past 12, 12 14 years. Also, it caused me to isolate for 10 years in uh, my, my parents' house, my mother's house. So I isolated in her house for about 10 years, just not, not messing, not, not uh, having conversating with anybody um, and just not even having the, the want or the feeling to even care to figure out what, what it was wrong with me, what is wrong with me, and how do I fix this? What do I do to manage my life? I just had no care. And what did that do to the people around you, your family members and friends? Um, I'd like to say my parents probably do have secondary PTSD from mine. Um, dealing with me and my anger issues and my outburst and... Um, just that unconditional love that they have for me, knowing that they want to help me, but they don't know how. And it just puts more of a hinder on their lives because they just see their son deteriorating per se and not knowing what to do. Friends, uh, I don't have too many, not too many people in the past 14 years, I even let close to me because not only do I not trust them, but, um, I'm just not, uh, I have angry issues. I'm not a very fun person to be around. Um, I was taught to channel my anger and use that uh, in combat and uh, to, to, to take out the enemy, et cetera. I was never taught what to do with my anger in a positive manner per se. And Samuel, do you think at any point in your life you will ever be able to have what we consider quote unquote a normal life? where that what you have seen, uh, that you have taken part in in the military will be a thing of the past, but obviously something you will never forget. It is a part of you now, but do you think you will be able to live what many consider a normal life at some point? The, my, the best answer I have for that question is, I know how to manage my PTSD now because I recognize it. I, I have knowledge of it. I know the effects that it does have on me um, and others are, that I, I can affect. Uh, but the best way I do that uh, is, is giving back what I, I was taught here at uh, Camp Hope. So when you ask the question, will I ever have a normal life? My honest answer would be, I'll never be a normal person, but I will know how to, I do know how to manage my life and my PTSD and anger and uh, cope in positive ways without using drugs and alcohol, but by, by using the Lord and uh, understanding God's grace 
and by giving back. And Samuel, that's that's all that you can do is take it day by day. And welcome back to The Factor on Censored. June is PTSD Awareness Month. Tonight, we're focusing on veterans who may be struggling after coming back home. My next guest tells me PTSD is a complex disorder, and it takes a lifetime to cope with it. And, of course, David Malsby with Camp Hope PTSD Foundation of America. Samuel's story is something that you see quite often as your organization, and it is PTSD Awareness Month here in, in June. Um, just how difficult is it to see these types of stories every day for you, David? Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> you can't hear these kind of stories without it affecting you. You just can't. And I, I do hear them all day, every day. We just did a tour a little earlier today, and I heard three of our guys just randomly that we came across as we went across the campus share part of their story. And uh, at least two of the three of the guys, by any normal standards, should not be alive today. And uh, then by the same standard, if they did miraculously live through it, they should be in jail. But instead, they're living a very productive life. And I would say this about Sam. Uh, so, Sam's story is Sam's story and how he feels about it is how he feels about it. But if you met him on the street or at an Astros game, something like that, you'd probably never know right. one that he served in the military. You'd probably never know that he had PTSD. You, you most likely would never sense that. And uh, Sam, it, it's not something that's cured. It's not something that goes away. You can't unsee what you've seen uh, and lose what you've lost. But like you said, he understands positive mechanisms and negative mechanisms and how those result in life. And uh, we love to joke about Oklahoma football and just have a good time when we're around each other. And uh, the, he, he li He's living life. And yes, it's a little bit different than the rest of us. He has to watch things a little closer than most of us, but he's doing fantastic. So, David, when you get individuals like Samuel and, and other military vets who come to you for guidance and help and assistance how long is that road or is it per per it's different per individual typically how long does it take once they get to your doorstep to get them acclimated to uh some sort of normalcy where they're they're like samuel managing their ptsd it is very individualized and what we do it's very individualized as far as ptsd so you hear it sometimes in terms of stage one, stage two, stage three, when you hear things like cancer. And you could probably do something similar to that with PTSD. Someone who has PTSD from whatever trauma in their life, it can affect them on different levels. The ones that come to our doorstep are almost always people who we're, we're their last stop. And some of them, like Sam, after having attempted suicide, they're lucky they got to that last stop. So for us, it's about six to eight months. Uh, we have had some come through and do very, very well in a much shorter time. But generally speaking, it's it's a six to eight month process. We've had guys been up, uh, been with us up to a year and even a little bit longer. It's it's very personal, and it includes not just PTSD and their combat trauma, but other traumas in their life, other mental health diagnoses in their life. I know you guys at uh, Camp Hope provide housing for those who are trying to start their, their lives over, but what else do you do there to help those who are suffering from PTSD, uh, which may include uh, some form of addiction as well? The vast majority of those that come to, our, to us do have addictions. So we have AA groups, we have NA groups. We run classes throughout the day that vary from emotional regulation to uh, self-esteem classes, uh, how to write thank you notes. It's a very wide variety of things. When they are getting closer to the completion of the program, we have a, an entirely uh, new program that's completely dedicated to their transition. And that can be going to back to school, it can be going to start a new career, or it can be if the family's, family is still an opportunity, transitioning back into the home. And that can be very challenging and very difficult as well. But we try to give them a very well-rounded program. We try to have some fun, uh, take them to a baseball game every now and then, something to get them out and interacting in public and realize they can do that and they can enjoy it again. 
So David, for those who are in the public who would like to help or get involved or just get more information, where can they go to learn more about Camp Hope and the PTSD Foundation of America? Well, the website is ptsdusa.org. Everything's there, including the support groups that we run across the city uh, outside of Camp Hope. Also, we run Zoom groups. People can join those. Um, then volunteer opportunities, donation opportunities, all of us there at the website. Also on our social media, uh, Facebook and Twitter, PTSD USA. So across the board, it's PTSD USA. All right. And Samuel, we want to thank you for joining us and sharing your story. Obviously, that's not easy to do, but you did it will it freely and willingly. And we appreciate you, sir. Thank you for joining us. And Dave, thank you for joining us as well. Those guys do some great work here in the community.